friends, welcome to episode 65 of Storyteller Conclave. This is a show all about helping you run the best tabletop role-playing game that you can. Whether you're a new storyteller or dungeon master learning the craft, or an experienced storyteller looking to take your game up to the next level, I am Sarah. I'm Rob. How are we doing, Rob? Um, pretty decent, I would say, overall. Yeah, yeah. It's been an interesting day. <laughs> I mean, but like the last week has been really good. Today's just been a weird kind of roller coaster of people telling me different things and having to put information in different boxes and work through it. Yeah, yeah. All of it really not bad and strangely enough nothing directly affecting me, but just a lot of people under effects. It's really weird. Yeah. Like Sunday was a weird day cuz everybody told me something failed on Sunday. <laughs> like it was just weird. Everybody was like, "Oh god, this went to hell. Oh god, this went to hell. Oh god." And I'm just like, "Wow, wow is, is something wrong with today today?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Sun- Sunday was I think Sunday was just a bad day all around and then you know, I think we're all just kind of coping in the current environment as well. So, I know I've been uh, I've been having kind of a bad week myself, but uh you know, we're here. We're uh we're doing the podcast, and that that that's always a a good high point for me in the week and such like that. So, uh, you, me? how are you? <laughs> oh my, <laughs> uh, I am I'm 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 fighting, but I'm winning today. Excellent. I mean, and that's yeah. I mean, we don't talk about that kind of stuff usually on the show, but we will flat out say it. We are humans. We are not superhuman. This show is a podcast. It is not a a. a paid radio show with hosts that have to put on plastic smiles and just accept things yeah like, well i've been probably pretty open about my struggle with depression and such like that and, right 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 and but, you know it's 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 been admittedly a bit of a bad week for me but uh you know i've i've got good friends such as you we do um uh who help me pull out of it and distract me from it when it's you know when it's too heavy when and stuff like that so when necessary took a few nice good depression naps and those were okay and <laughs> that and there's, there's nothing wrong with uh that. sean and i have been playing through uh Ghost of Tsushima, uh, which is an amazing game on the PS4. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so you know we've been we've been we've been getting through it. Okay. Getting okay. through it. So. Well, good, good, good. Um, you said we got another Twitter follower, and uh, I yeah, thought we'd give, we'd a, do a, give shout. a bit of a shout out to a Bristol, England. We got a new listener yeah. over there. We're, so. we're glad to have you. We hope you join us on our our live stream, or at least join our Discord as well. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Yeah, uh, we're always us. interested in in more listeners as as well as. Uh, companions to the show and i really don't even talk about that but it's some of the things that i'm gonna start looking into over the next month so if if you know of other companion products people who do you know uh add-ons uh ad, you know or or maps or tools or things and they they want to talk with us or want us to review something we'd be happy to do it i've mm-hmm. already we've looked at some pieces already on our own um but we'd love to connect with other people and and be able to add some of that content to our show because we'd love to bring you guys new stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially when you do stuff in our channel like a freaking Tiamat. That looked incredible. A 3D printed Tiamat. A free mat if you yeah, will. Uh, I like that. I uh-huh. like that. I like that. Uh, it was incredible. It was beautiful to see. I'm glad the community showed it off. And and uh, I hope that brings up a little bit more buzz for people and gives people a little bit of encouragement to do it in your own stories. Because there yeah, is right a on. lot of that out there. Yeah, there really is. There really is. There's an amazing amount of uh, not only like you, you can do the 3D printing with the Hero Forge minis, but um, there's a, an amazing array of uh, of monsters and such like that. The people have gone through the the monster manual and 3d modeled um all those things yeah, like, so much yeah so i mean if you have printers available to you there's just the I, world is totally different yeah. it's not the show that we're going to talk about for that because i think we could do a whole show on I mean, how we, much we our nerddom has <laughs> well even just in the last year how much has changed mm-hmm. i mean we could do a whole show on just the changes since the all right, we'll be doing that show. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let us digress just a little bit because we have to roll back time a little bit. Well, we, don't, we don't have to digress anything, man. This is our show. We got microphones. I suppose. <laughs> that is true. We have microphones and you don't, so this is going to happen. Plus, we can always just go longer than an hour if we really wanted to. That's true. That's true. So that all being said, we wanted to kind of go back and revisit etiquette. Because it's always good to talk about it. Yeah. It's always good to revisit. And you pick up things along the way um, that are good to to talk about and to address and to have people, uh, you know, from other perspectives come in. And we have some good questions this week as well, mm-hmm. like we always do. Um, 
but I think it's uh, I think it's important to kind of just reconnect with it and and review. And I, and I think it's a really common issue too. Like um, I'm subscribed to several subreddits on Reddit that um, you know deal with D and D and and various tabletop role playing games and such like that. And it's a common thing that I see all the time. Um, people talking about their storytelling experiences of a lot of times it doesn't have to do with you know well how do I effectively tell you know a, a story about a big bad evil guy or how do I right. incorporate sensitive topics like you know rape or child abuse or something like that into into a story if it's right. you know a, how do you handle adult themes or anything it's usually things like so I've got this one player that just never shows up on time you know or uh you know, so two of my players got in a fight at the table. How do I deal with this? <laughs> so I think there's, there's etiquette. I think, you know, it transcends game systems. It transcends um, even gaming, you know, uh, story types. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's everywhere. Anytime you get people together to play a game, there are certain rules of etiquette that you that you need to follow. Right. And, and unless somebody like explains to you that there are that there that etiquettes out there a lot of times you don't even know about it Mm -hmm. and i think that's in itself i I wouldn't say a deficiency but like most systems don't talk about what good etiquette is yeah there's usually there's a few there's usually game master sections in 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 player handbooks and stuff that there's sometimes you know dungeon master guides and whatnot Mm -hmm. um or you know storyteller guides uh there are sections on there about you know what a tabletop role-playing game is and what the various roles are in running that game are versus, you know, player versus storyteller. Right. But rarely, rarely do they say like how to handle difficult situations between interpersonal people, you know? Yeah. And everybody handles that stress differently, sometimes poorly because they've never had to deal with it before, had any guidance in it. And I think just in the years that I've done, I know I've handled it poorly in the past. Yeah. I've handled horrible situations completely terribly and learned a lot from it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that through just our conversations and through the expression of our uh, other uh, members of our Discord and our community, we can kind of come to a consensus of some of the better ways to handle these things. And I think we have learned some things even along the way. Yeah. And I, so. I think, I think you know, so thing number one is just remember we're all human. Yes. You know, and yeah, sure. I've, I've screwed things up. Rob screwed things up. You know, there's ever, I think everybody screwed something up at one time or another, you yeah. know. Um, but it's, it's largely about communicating. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we say it all the time. Here we are again. Yeah. Communication is key. Yeah. I you think. You are all people talk about your issues. Yeah. And I, I, I will say that communication is key, but like, I think one of the key things to communication that you have to stack on top of that is don't be a dick. Yeah, it's, it's the Wheaton rule. It's the Wheaton rule, but it, I mean, it goes deeper than that. I mean, it pretty much sits in almost every known culture and language. Mm-hmm. Is if you if you just be reasonable, don't be a dick, don't don't make assumptions, just be plain and simple and kind, mm-hmm. and and you can get through a lot doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, and and uh, again, you know, always always talking good faith too. You know, don't don't go into things assuming that the other party is out to hurt you. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, just 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 communicate in good faith. Yeah, That's it. yeah, 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 yeah. So that brings us to our first topic, our first subtopic of the whole gaming etiquette thing, and this is kind of the one that I really wanted to talk about today. This okay, is, uh, I'm feeling this. The uh, the punctuality, scheduling, and attention. You definitely have some opinions about this. Uh, I, I had a few. Um, <laughs> if you guys could see the sheet, it's very impressive. It, well, again, largely, like I said, I, I I kept going over these these forums that I'm a part of, mm-hmm. and I see discussion thread after discussion thread after discussion thread of people talking about players who they don't show up. Mm-hmm. Like they, they say they'll be there and then they just no show. Right. Um, a lot of players who are like canceling last minute. And a lot mm-hmm. of times you get combinations of them. Like, right. you know, the thread, the thread is my gaming group is falling apart and I don't know what to do. And then you start reading into the details and they're like, well, I got this one guy who says he'll be there and then just, ghosts mm-hmm. and then we got this other player who calls me 30 minutes before game time and says oh something came up yeah i'm double booked or whatever i'm double booked or whatever um and then you know and and on top of that i've also seen a lot of times where players would be like oh yeah uh yeah i can't make it something came up and then like you see a tweet from them later that day saying hey we're hanging out with my friends at the mall or something like that you know right 
and it's like god god i just date myself i think the worst such a 90s kid saying we're hanging out at the mall well the one that got me was uh and i because I, I was looking for some etiquettes and things and one of uh-huh. the ones that got me was uh how do i approach a player who doesn't pay attention in my game but I literally caught him tweeting about another game that he was in while playing my game remotely. Yeah, that I I saw, so I saw another one, um, just like that where uh someone said like they tweeted out during the game mm-hmm. they tweeted out something like and I I couldn't find the exact quote for it but, right 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 um it was like uh. Uh, doing homework, uh, being on Instagram, chatting with three po- people online, and playing D and D all at once. Talk about multitasking! Like this was a great thing he was doing. Yeah, that's a horrible thing you're doing. And there. like, imagine your storyteller reading that. I'm like, yeah, those are all the things. You- My game is so unengaging to you. Yeah, that you have time to be doing all those other things that you want to be doing all those other things instead of just focusing on the game. Yeah, and and I'm sorry if someone has engaged time with you. Time enough that they spent time prior preparing mm-hmm. and scheduling and writing and painting and building and doing things, whether it be digital, whether it be physical, whatever. And then the whole time you're with them, you're doing nine other things. That's pretty much being disrespectful. I don't care what you're thinking. That's disrespectful. Mm-hmm. I don't know who taught you it wasn't. But, I, I mean, I can be very blunt and say that, like... If someone makes you a like does it go goes ahead and makes you a formal dinner and through the whole damn dinner you're literally just staring at your phone and picking at the meal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like, sorry. Is my is my company so boring to you that you know you need to entertain yourself elseways? Right. Like I'm I'm sorry. I mean there are, there are much more graphic things that I could have just said there mm-hmm. which definitely would have been off the rails for for any of our our distribution houses but needless to say you could imagine doing an activity with somebody and that person not paying attention during said activity and it being very 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 depressing (laughs) something something counting cracks on the ceiling yeah you know beige i think we should paint the ceiling beige Yeah. yeah 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 i think that's the base comment there yep so i'm not saying that you have to come to every session with that mentality but you have to come to any event that is being put on for you by someone yeah, if with that kind of reverence. If you're going to game, go to play. Yeah. Go to play. Yeah. You know, and now, I mean, to play, I don't want to say devil's advocate because it's not really devil's advocate, but just, just to at least look at the other side of the coin. Of course. Like, always. Look, always. Real life always comes first. 100%. Know? And, and, and I get that. Things do come up. Without a doubt. Sometimes something that is more important, whether that be a family obligation or a work obligation mm-hmm. or some other life obligation, um, you know, as someone who, who struggles with depression myself, I was talking yep. about this earlier, I have called off on your game before. You have. Because I, I, I was too sad. I wasn't coming over. I wasn't going to put myself in an environment like that. I could not get myself out of the house that day. Right. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. You could barely get yourself out of bed that day. Yeah, exactly. And so, I can respect that, but you also communicated that with me. But I communicated that with you. Correct. And and we and, and, and I get it. Like, I've had people had to bail on my game because a work thing came up or a, or a, or a family thing came up. Mm-hmm. Real life, real life happens. That's fine. And these are games. So it's not... Like we're saying that you have to like drop everything and have like a work ethic about your game or anything. But at the same time, though, just communicate that, you know, don't come to the game and then, you know, bring your work laptop with you and be working on that the whole time. And then every time I'm like, are you paying attention? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then right back to work. You know, if you're going to work, work. If you're going to game, game. It's fine. Just tell me you can't. Mm hmm. Just let me know where your priorities are, and and we'll work with that, okay? But uh, I don't know. I feel like that got a little ranty. <laughs> it, well, this whole thing is going to feel ranty. It's going to feel a little ranty because it, it's it's about a lot of pet peeves that we have, we as storytellers have. Um, and and please, like, don't don't feel like we're coming down on you. Like it's like we said at the beginning, we're not that. focusing on anybody. We're literally focusing on what things are frustrating and why. And then also what it, what it's like from both perspectives. Yeah, I don't want That's this. What we're doing. I, I just want this to be an angry show to listen to. You know, mm, angry I don't want, show. I don't want people to come across from the cause come out I'll of the show. I'll just put the hashtag like, rage in there, and we'll just leave it at that. So, <laughs> this is our rage show. So angry! I listened to Storyteller Conclave to relax, <laughs> and Sarah was <laughs> ranting. So, um, 
but yeah, no, seriously, uh, uh, you know, if things come up. It's fine. We understand. We're people too. Sometimes things come up with us, but uh, you know, just just be honest. Just communicate those sort of things. And if you can't devote your attention to the game, don't. Yeah, and if you if you're having a hard time with it, communicate. Mm-hmm. Don't don't just don't Irish exit your game. Don't ghost. Yeah, it's it's not healthy. That's not healthy. Now, on a side note, mm-hmm. um, one of the other big things that distract us, aside from uh, modern technology mm-hmm. and and other such things, oh, is, yeah. you know, going going five different directions all at once, is honestly just the side chatter. Yeah. It's a uh, you know, it's a social game. It is. We're typically, at least maybe not nowadays, but sitting in a room with our friends, mm-hmm. um, gathered together, and yeah, I mean, e- even even if it is on the topic of the game. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody makes a funny quip and then it devolves into five minutes of joking about that funny quip that made everybody laugh. Or showing it or passing a phone around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, no, no, I just mean someone like, uh, uh, you know, one of your characters asks what his bard's name is and uh, he, oh. ans- he, without blad- batting an eye or skipping a heartbeat, goes, Aerosmith. And it derails the game for five minutes because as funny as it was, <laughs> and it... And it was. And it was. And I want to be quite clear about it that. It was very funny. That was amazing. It was a great moment. But but things like that, they derail the game because everybody's like, oh my god, that was so funny. And now the focus goes from the game and the flow of the role play at the moment to, oh, that was so funny. Oh, hey, remember this other thing that was funny. And oh yep. my god, remember the thing that he just said two minutes ago that was funny? That was funny. Yeah, exactly. Um, So... I, I know it's it's kind of a common question of like how do you moderate that sort of like chatter without without sounding like an old school marm, you know? It's like slapping people's knuckles with a ruler. Yeah, I think uh, there's an art to it, and I was kind of looking up, I was trying to find the guy who said it, but um, comedians have that moment when a joke hits so hard that you can't keep going uh-huh. to your next frame, your next point in your in your joke. Yeah, yeah. They, they they it's a rise basically. And you can ride that rise with other jokes sometimes, but sometimes it can move away from your material. Mm-hmm. So one of the one of the things they do is there's a, a a timbre you wait. And as the storyteller, once you have captured your group as the focus point, mm-hmm. you have to keep that and let that come down without riding it, without accepting it. Just just let them have that smile at it. Don't laugh with them, don't encourage it. Wait till it comes down, say, and then just continue. Yep, yep. You know, I, it's it's funny. You you put all that into words, and I'm following along going, oh, my God, that's exactly what I do at the table. Exactly. Like, you just, you, you can smile, you can nod, but you don't encourage. Correct. You don't add anything to the pile. You know, you once, make a little note to say that it was very funny, and you make that note for later, you and, know. And once it ebbs on its own, and it will mm-hmm. eventually, well, usually. If you usually don't encourage it, does, it, yeah. It will, it will ebb on its own. And then you can literally just, and the man looks at you and right. says, and go yeah. right back into the RP, right. and it roll. will, and everybody will fall right back into yep. it. You just, you just have to not be the instigator, or, or not be the instigator, not be the second follower on it to add to it. Right. right. And that's hard. It's really hard because you're connected with that group just as much. You know, but at the same time, I mean, as a storyteller, you could allow yourself to put dog in on things just once in a while. Yeah. You know? But be prepared for but, the, the offense of that. And yeah. that's where I think like, hey, 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 guys, well, like, well, you just brought up the joke. Like, now you want to fold us back? And that's where that... That's where that moment you have yes. to take. Like you, you can you can add in a quip or two, and that's fine. But then step away from it yep. and let it ebb. Correct. You know, let Correct. them let your players have their moment. Yep. Um. Now, in in I would say too, like uh, just uh, my my advice to players in general would just be like if your storyteller does step in and just kind of say, okay, guys, let's we've we've had our moment. Let's get it back on track here. Um. Don't don't get mad at them for that. Like that's it, they're they're just really trying to keep things going. Um. Uh, I, I think we've all, um, or at least most of us, have had that experience where, like, you've got two hours of story to tell, and it takes you 12 hours mm-hmm. because you're trying to get through a room, and you describe one thing about the room, and somebody has a side comment, and somebody has a side comment about that comment, mm-hmm. and then five minutes of chatter goes on, and you go, okay, let's bring it back. Anyway, you're in a green room, and there's a big door on the other end. Oh, big door! And the, again, it's just... It goes off the rails. At that point, I would say you need to pause and just be like, okay, guys, I understand there's some distraction going on here. Can we try and reframe ourselves yeah. to play the game? Let's let's get through this. You know? Right. Yep, yep. So um, every so and then you do need to just yep. 
not to say put your foot down. I mean, that makes it sound like it's really like, you know. But, well, but set expectations. Kind of, yeah, you need to set some expectations. Especially uh, if you come into a game with the expectation that there's a lot of ground to cover. Mm-hmm. And they're just not getting there. Yeah. Like, there's two ways you can take that. One, you can take it, you can literally have your little card, your GM card that, that reminds you that the game runs at the player pace. Mm-hmm. That you can't cram them through things. It is not up to you to do that. The story will unfold as the story unfolds, mm-hmm. which, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and then the second line on that card pretty much tells you, relax and remind them with and set an expectation. Yeah. I because mean, otherwise you will just get angry at players for playing a game. That's true. That's true. And I mean, there, there's a huge difference, though, mm-hmm. between, you know, players getting hung up on a plot element. I agree. And spending four hours talking to an NPC you expected to be a five-minute encounter. Exactly. And that, and that happens. Yeah, well, that but, very much happens. But if they're engaging with the game, you let then, that happen. That's not distraction. That's just... Correct. Unplanned you know storytelling right. and that's what i'm saying is you've got to you've got to right. be able to discern which one you're dealing with yeah. and if the players are doing it in game and in character maybe a little out of character but they're still playing with the plot yeah let them play with the plot let maybe today is the balloon day where they're like puppies in a backyard with a balloon let mm-hmm. let them go let them go it doesn't matter maybe they need this and at the end they're going to be like we didn't get anything done what did we do you played with a balloon all day long yeah, I play with the balloon all the time. And then they feel bad about it, and the next time they kind of reframe themselves, and that happens. Yeah. You get a free day out of it, you make some extra notes, mm-hmm. and you roll with it. That's... But on the other hand, if they bring up, like, you know, how a Zoom meeting degraded into a meme war that degraded into this great joke, and hey, let me show you this thing, and you're like, okay, guys, this has nothing to do with the game. Can we reframe? Yeah. yeah. That's where you need to start cutting it off a little sooner. Yep, exactly. And then talk to those players who keep derailing. Mm-hmm. And communicate with them that it's frustrating yeah i'd say if, if it is if it is one one player that continues to instigate it that might be a side conversation you might want to have you know definitely do it on the side too you don't want to call the person out in front of everybody oh, never just never 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 embarrassment that and doesn't try not to, to do the mid-game pull to the side for secret discussion thing that's even worse oh yeah because now they don't know what was said and words will be like every is everyone okay now there's a lot of speculation right. and now you've shifted the entire mood of the game exactly yeah exactly so Topic number two. Sensitive subjects. Sensitive that X card. Subjects. So I support the X card. Um, well, hold on, hold on. Let's not get too far ahead. I know we've talked about the X card before, but for people who have not listened to every single episode of Storyteller Conclave. Yes, that's true. Um, so when we're talking about sensitive subjects, we're talking about things that could be sensitive to anyone, not just the in-game stuff, but we're talking about out-of-game. So... Places where players aren't aware of a trigger that might become up that they may not even recognize as a trigger, or maybe they do. Right. Maybe you as the storyteller didn't know. Like, maybe, you know, uh, your friend Trevor brought Callie to the game because she really wanted to play a druid, and this game fit really well, and you're like, okay, bring her no big deal. And then, like, literally four, you know, you know, four hours in, you're like, okay, and you make it to the crone's house, and there's a baby in the pot just bubbling, clearly t- being turned into a stew. And she, her eyes go wide and gets up and she starts crying and running from the table. Mm -hmm. And literally Trev looks at you and just like, dude. How could you? And you're like, how could I what? Exactly. She's a hag. Yeah. And then. you expect her to have, you know, sugar and spice in here? Like, dude, she, you know. Yeah. Something sensitive just just happened happened in her life. Right, right. And that's a huge trauma trigger for her. Right. And. I don't know this stuff. Right. And that's, that's part of it is, is is being aware mm-hmm. and preparing people for scenes. There's a reason why TV shows have disclosures Con- right at the warnings. beginning of them. Yeah. They're saying, you know, content in this episode may be extreme yeah. and show violence, of, blood, and whatever, you know. So, you know a content of a sexual nature, et right. cetera, you know. And having those communications with your party, they could just be like, we, I don't need that today. I can't do that today. Mm-hmm. And then you might be like, oh, okay, I'm going to revamp a little bit. Give me like 10 minutes to... To organize some thoughts and, um, you know, and maybe you have right. to do something in between. But regardless, those are the kinds of triggers that can happen during any session for any number of reasons. Mm-hmm. You never know what they're going to be. Exactly. And, and day to day that can change. Somebody could have read a, you know, just recent, you know, story about, you know, uh, a, a person being mistaken um, 
and and having some kind of racism or or you know something happen and then you apply something in the game that you thought was simple now is directly affecting them and so suddenly they get enraged Mm -hmm. and now you're like oh shit what what just happened there right right so the x card is a um a concept that uh i think we read it in the urban shadows book was i think it's a apocalypse world actually has it as a default it's it's an apocalypse world thing um but i think they also got it from somewhere else i know we referenced Mm -hmm. the exact thing and i did not yes i didn't do my homework for this show i didn't go back and look it up when i, I think it's actually in our old show we, we we referenced back to the original but we, we did we did um we're bad today <laughs> so anyway uh the x card is a just a literally a physical card mm-hmm. that you place out on your table yep. and just has a big big x on it yep and um if anyone at any time has any problems with the content of the story Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, mind you, and we're we're talking from like a psychological triggering, like you know, they are uncomfortable by things that are happening. This isn't like a I don't want the big bad evil guy to kill my you know ninth level druid, so I'm gonna flip the X card thing. That's not what we're talking about. Um, but like if you're uncomfortable with the content here, and something is causing you psychological discomfort, you flip that X card over, and the scene ends, and you explain that away however you need to in the story. But, um, that basically like, you know, that's your way of saying like, you know, this interrogation of the bandits has gone a step too far Mm -hmm. and we are now sitting around a table intricately describing the torture methods we're using to get the information out of them. Maybe flip the X card, you know, and things can just in the course of natural, you know, natural progression. It's not like anybody's set out to do anything. It's not like, you know, you've got some sinister storyteller, sinister player at your your table who's just, you know, the I mean, it does happen where you've got players who just want to introduce edgy things because they think it's, you know, super edgy and interesting. And like, that's the only way to get shock value out of people. But a lot of times at tables, it just happens because. These are things that exist in reality. It's true. It's true. And when you want to tell stories about especially evil things, um, you know, evil people do evil things. Yeah. And so, like, that whole, you know, baby in the cauldron thing, okay, sure, that it, that could be sensitive content for people who have, you know, child-related hang-ups and whatnot, mm-hmm. and that is perfectly respectable. But at the same time, it's a hag with a big boiling cauldron you know you kind of want to call back to that whole hansel and gretel thing exactly you know cooking the children ha 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 she's an evil witch in the woods and you think of it as a light-hearted you know callback to a childhood story and for someone else it is literally stewing up their trauma indeed so you know a a lot of times it happens as, as innocently like that the x card can make it quick and clean to just be like nope yeah and I've seen some write-ups, which I thought was interesting, which is something we didn't necessarily talk, is that some people have uh, triggers that involve uh, arguments. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't realize this was such a big thing, but there were a lot of players who were struggling with other games uh, that they were having where debates at the table happen between players. And a lot of that is between characters, but the feeling bleeds over a little bit there. Yeah. And yeah. somebody at the table was, one of the other players was actually writing this and they said, I don't know how to work with my GM about this because it's not that they've said anything, but I don't want to ruin it. When I brought it up to one of the players, I was like, Hey, can you guys not fight as hard as you do? I, you know, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable and it makes me not want to be part of the game. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, well, we're just arguing about our characters. I mean, my character, you know, and they didn't say this, but effectively it was like, my character's a paladin and he's a thief and he keeps stealing. So I'm going to keep arguing with him about stealing and trying to change his mind. And he's fine with that. And that's, that's just how our characters interact. She's like, no, but you guys get into like 10 minute arguments yeah. that, yeah. you know, almost at times turn into you guys fighting in game. And then you continue talking about it after the game. And, like, I don't need that level of stress. That's not why I come to game. Like, right, right. Like, and the truth was, and she kind of iterated, but she didn't have to, but, like, her family were, like, her, her father was drunken and her mother was abused. And they would constantly scream and fight. Mm-hmm. And she just can't handle that. She yeah. can't, she doesn't ever want to deal with you that kind of stress. You want to use this as an escape. You don't want to, you don't want to come to a game table and, S- you know. Right. So she had, the, the suggestions came out that, that she should be be able to bring the x card into the game for that and mm-hmm. say hey guys can we can we drop this can we just say you had an argument about it and move on and, and they and they continue to argue into the night fade to black exactly exactly and even the story at that point the player should be able to be creative enough to say the next morning they could go between the two i'm like okay uh we're gonna roll a d6 to see who won the argument uh 
three, you won the argument. Uh, you have a black eye in the morning. Fair enough. And th- th- they just move on from there. Yeah. You know, and that's how the conversation ends that night. Or maybe it ends differently and they just play it off that way. That is good role playing still. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have an argument that drags on and is dramatic. Yeah, almost almost verging on PvP. Exactly, you know? exactly. And I, I think that's a great use of the X card to help players filter through those moments as well. Now, the the other important thing about the X card, too, is that you don't ever want to use it to violate someone's privacy. I agree. You know, if someone flips the X card... Um, I mean, I would say maybe go as far as, you know, asking like, okay, what, you know, what are we avoiding here? Right. What if, was, if, the... if it's ambiguous, if it's ambiguous, correct. Now, I mean, you know, you walk into the hag's den, everybody's fine. There's a baby in the cauldron that X card gets flipped. You kind of know what happened there. Correct. But you know, if you're in the middle of the scene in the middle of like a dungeon or something like that, you don't know one of your characters is maybe severely hydrophobic. Right. And you say, okay, you walk down the stairs and there's three feet of standing water in this floor of the dungeon. Right. And that X card gets flipped. You're like, was it the dungeon? Are you mildew phobic? Or, you know, I'm not cool with water. Okay, cool. This floor is not flooded now. Right. And I will have to rethink the next trap because it depended on it being flooded. But it that's is my... covered in heavy moss. But that's my problem, yeah. not yours. Right. And and you just take a minute, you reset. And as a storyteller, your first response should not be "What the hell." Your your response should be, "Okay, what do I need to do to accommodate?" Exactly. Look, you are. All... It's, we talked about the assumption of friendship at the table. Correct. Always. You are all friends at that table, even if you're a random group of people. Who have just met in like an adventurers league at your FLGS, yep. or or, or uh, off of D two uh, uh, roll twenty online, or it's, or it's a convention and or, le- these people just sat down. Exactly, you are you you play under the assumption that all these people are your friends and you have their best interest in mind, and they are friends to each other. Exactly, that is the best way to handle that moment. And everyone is there to have fun. Yep. And even if you don't know them, you know that they are there to have fun. And it's if a that party card after gets all. Flipped, Exactly. It's a party after all. If they're if the X card gets flipped, it's because someone's not having fun at the table. Exactly. And exactly. So, um, if I mean, if it's if you feel comfortable and safe discussing what the trigger was, you go into as much detail as you want in private, in public. That's that's up to you to decide mm-hmm. as the flipper of the X card. Yep. But it's important that nobody uses that as a chance to interrogate you about. Ever. Your history, about your trauma, about well, what particular problems you had. Like, you're not there to relive all that stuff. And that's the etiquette on the other side of that coin. Yeah. It's the, if you're, excuse me, if you're another player at that game and someone flips an X card, it is beholden upon you to take a step back mm-hmm. and just evaluate with everyone else. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever that situation just was, however that just happened, what what needs to change? And just accept that change. Yep. That's it. That simple. Absolutely. All right. You think we talked about the X card enough? Yeah, I All think right. so. I think so. All right, that's good. Uh, so our last topic. Yes. And this is this is the this is the trick that I learned from you. Thank you. This is the 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 one thing that I I ripped completely from your storytelling style and I apply it liberally all over mine because I think it's a great idea. I'm glad. Um, post game feedback. So when we play, um, one of our players, uh, uh. Uh, be, has a, a hard stop at 8 p.m. Um, rule. Uh, and so uh, to abide by that, uh, that that wish of that player, uh, we don't play beyond 8 p.m. Um, she is prepared to walk out the door at 8. Correct. So what I do is I end my game at 7.30. Mm-hmm. So we have enough time to do a post-game feedback session. Um, now what this means, uh, typically this means that there are three questions that we ask. Um, and this is to kind of uh, ensure that everybody's concerns are heard, that I am telling the best story that I possibly can by hearing what people liked and what people didn't like about that particular storytelling session, and that we do it while everything is fresh on everybody's minds. Yes. And we're all kind of still in the moment and such like that. Um, and this, I think, can lead to... Um, preemptively cutting off a lot of uncomfortable situations in future games. Yes. Um, and, you know, if if there was a breach of etiquette, mm-hmm. um, if there was, a, like, an out-of-character concern where, you know, somebody was doing something they didn't like or something like mm-hmm. that, now's the time to kind of bring it up. You, you are dedicating time at the end of your session to talk about the session out-of-character. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So we basically go around the table, mm-hmm. and there's there's three questions. Did you have fun? Mm-hmm. What was the one thing you liked most about this game tonight? Mm-hmm. And what was the thing that we could have done better that was a pain point for you that was, um, be that an out of character, you know, process thing? Uh, do you feel like the story was too combat heavy, too talking heavy? Yep. Um, did you not like how I story told a particular leg of the story? You know, you think you could have handled the, you know, the, the, the exploration aspect a little bit better or right. maybe the social combat at the party was a little ham handed and, you know, could have gone smoother. I don't know. But it's your chance. Uh, I'm asking you directly, one on one, as a player. Tell me what I can do better. Right. And I think one of the things that a lot of people do is they'll ask a simple question, and they'll get a simple answer, and that's not necessarily what they want out mm-hmm. of it. Like to ask if you've had fun, yes or no, you're going to get a simple answer. It's a starter question. Yeah. What you really want to do is get two specific questions. And the more you storytell with a group, the more you can get specific each session. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, that's where you can start. You can say, hey, you know, did you have fun? Yes. What was one thing that you really enjoyed? And that's a good way to also, uh, for certain games, to make sure that everyone comes back and you can you can kind of basically figure out how you want to maybe do a lot XP or what inspiration needs to come out of it or drama dice or things like that. Um those are kind of things that can can help a storyteller. If if there was a pain point, that helps you as a storyteller then lean into what you can correct. So that can lead to additional questions to ask mm-hmm. that are more specific. And I think that's where you want to get to. You want to get to a refined point as a storyteller that not only are you taking this information from them, but you're refining it to a point where you know what you need to improve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And use that information as best you can. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, keeping in mind, too, you know, what was your favorite thing about the game is also an informational, critical, you know, critique as well. Um, you know, it, it's it's an honest question where, you know, if somebody says, I liked this particular section of the, of the thing, you know, uh, maybe a dungeon you ran or maybe an NPC you ran or something like that, especially if that was something you were just trying out, you know, for this for this game session, that's valuable feedback that it did hit well with your players. You know, if you do have that memorable moment where everybody at your table agrees like, yeah, that thing you did was really awesome. Well, maybe do more of that in the next, you know, the next time around. That's 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 good feedback. And it's important to note that your negative feedback is not, you know, it's not that you have failed as a storyteller. It's just that, you know, you need to know for your gaming group what is working what is not, so that you can make sure that you avoid those pitfalls and improve upon them next time. It's them giving you the cheat codes on how to make the perfect session for them. And honestly, if someone's going to put that kind of power in your hands, run with it. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten stupidly used to surveys and questionnaires and things like that that we feel has no reference. Mm -hmm. But for the people who generate those and take that data... They take that very seriously to try and improve upon what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They're not just out there to be trash. I know. I've been the other side of that coin, polling that data and making sure that it makes relevance. It's why I ask the questions that I do prior to game. Yeah. To make sure that the game gets built the way the players want to see it mm-hmm. and want to enjoy it. And that may change throughout the session, and that's what those other questions are for. We may get into an explorer-heavy game that's mostly conversational, and literally four sessions in, people are like, you know, the one thing I really haven't liked about the last two sessions is there hasn't been a lot of combat. We've been dealing with all these people. There's been a lot of intrigue, but I kind of want a, a little more adventure in our adventure. Can, sure. we, can we get that? And so now we're altering the story away from what was originally penned out, but it's doing that because it's at request. Mm-hmm. And we can do that. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. It's, so. and, and absolutely, and you're you're gonna get that kind of con- you're gonna get that kind of feedback. But also, like sometimes, uh, well, I, to to get into a specific example mm-hmm. from my game, sure, you know, some and and to kind of bring it back to the tabletop etiquette, sort of, you know, sort okay. of sort of topic here. Um, we had a one of these breakdown sessions after one of my games where uh, your like you mentioned the the two characters arguing in character. Yep, your character and the asshole noble bard kept getting into it yes we did and it got to a point where other players were like oh, these two again yep and it and when we said at the end of the game okay what was one thing you didn't like well it was honestly thalian and theodane drawing at each other yep for 20 minutes yep you know um 
And so we talked about it as a group. Yep, and we changed it. We put everything on the table, made sure that it was in in, in character disagreement. Um, everybody made their thoughts on it known, and we had a mature discussion like adults about it. Indeed. And I think it was very productive. Yep. So are we? Are, do we need? Do you want to say anything more there? Uh, with regards to the questions, just the, the post game questions. Um. No, I think I think mostly just you know you use them use them to understand your in game and out of game concerns, both positive and negative. Take that feedback um, openly and accept it, and use it to make your game better. Mm-hmm. Use it to make your group better. Yes, improve. That's if the only thing you do from that is improve one thing every session mm-hmm. or one percent of the things every session. I think you will see a graduated improvement within yourself and your players will recognize it. I do have one more thing to Go say for about it. this. Um, and that is that obviously this requires player participation. Yes. Um, some of your players will not, um, if, if you do do this breakdown, um, some of your players will not be prepared to talk about things at that moment. Um, specifically, like like Sean has told me before, like, hmm, my thoughts aren't really organized on it, and I feel a little on the spot. Okay, we'll skip you. That's fine. I, I live with you. I know where you go. I, yeah. I know where you. You know, you, you'll, you'll be later. Make and some notes to, to 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 revisit that, but don't let it go too long. Yeah. Maybe it's just a like in front of other people thing. Maybe it's that that person feels like questioning is hurt is is, is too anxious for them, too anxiety ridden for them that night. Yeah, and and Which especially happens. if something interpersonal did happen, they may not want to just like, you know, did disgorge that all over the you know the the table and or they may they may have gone through the whole session in a slump because they came because they wanted to be there and uh-huh. they were with other people but they just didn't have the energy to be in the session they're like eh, i really i mean i had fun but like i don't have anything today and you're like you know let's talk about this later is that cool yeah that's cool that's fine let them let them lay low let them have that low energy because the next day they might be a totally different person because they they came into session differently. Mm-hmm. So, all right, I think that's all I got to say. Okay, okay. Not. So, let's be concise. Let's bring it back to the skinny. All right, communication is key. We always say it. We're going to say it again and again on the show. Communication in good faith between adults is key. Remember that your party is a party, regardless of if you're a player mm-hmm. or you're the storyteller. You are at a party together. Be cordial. Be uh, respectful and responsive to each other and be understanding. Be able to take that step back and listen versus immediately become defensive, mm-hmm. you know, or or jump on something. As a storyteller, one of the best things you can do is be quiet and just listen because things sometimes will calm themselves down, especially when it comes to laughter and stuff. Mm-hmm. But when things get tight, one of the best things you can do is throw a card and make everybody pause. And just reevaluate where they're at because that's what that says is that I am uncomfortable and you're all my friends and you're recognizing that this is making me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's a physical device. It's the talking stick. It's the stop button. It's it's that. And that's what it's there for. Yep. Uh, And I think lastly, just remember, be respectful of everyone's time. Um, You know, especially nowadays, there's a lot, a lot of things going on. Um, and, you know, your storytellers are putting a lot of work into telling these stories. Uh, and so players, be respectful of your storyteller's time. Um, if, if you say you're going to show up, do your best to show up. If you uh, cannot, let them know more than 30 minutes ahead of game, probably, if you can. Um, and players, be respectful of your, of your players' time. Sometimes they got things going on. If they can't make it, you know, just try to work that out like adults and, uh, you know, like I said, communication's key. So, mm-hmm. want to do some questions? Oh yeah, totally. We got some good questions. All right, go ahead and start. All right. So Knox asks a long question. Uh, I don't know if this has ever happened to anyone, but I feel like it could. If you were, uh, what if you're playing with your friends and they're notoriously hyper, over hyper destructive children? Make a beeline for your table and set up. In a panic, you might have shouted or scolded the child because the parent was also notorious, either oblivious or apathetic. Now, the coddling parent is angry because you startled the little junior and made them cry in your attempt to project, uh, protect your game, pieces, and work, which everyone feels is respected. 
What is your best advice for making sure everyone moves forward respected and happy? That oh. seems like a very specific situation. <laughs> I have to say that. It does, but I wouldn't say it's terribly uncommon. Um, I mean, it always gets a little it gets a little weird when, when children become involved. Um, because there's an instinct, and I'm saying this as a non-parent, so... Uh, you know, understand that this is coming from a, a, a possibly uninformed perspective. But I think, you know, when, when children become involved, um, emotions skew towards, you know, parent protect child. And so, you know, if you do have a situation where the, the kid is a little too rambunctious around some miniatures that may have been expensive or delicate or, you know, took a lot of time professionally painting or something like that. And then, you know, you might want to get defensive over that might snap at the child parent steps in and says hey don't talk to my kid like that Mm. i mean i don't really know that this is a gaming etiquette question at this point i think this is two adults that need to work some things out i agree and maybe the parent needs to figure out how to keep a rambunctious child away from a bunch of delicate miniatures i i 100 agree i mean it's a tough situation because you're you're attempting to protect something that is that is effort and res- and res- something to be respected. It's not only art, but it's something that more than just one person is there to enjoy. Mm-hmm. This isn't like a birthday cake for one of those child who that if he runs over and mashes his hand in it, whatever. It's his cake. He can do whatever the hell he wants with it. Yeah. If this is a six foot or, you know, a, a six foot table covered in delicately placed minis, terrain and and, and like dry ice, you know. And this kid wants to literally play with his Legos on that? No. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like, maybe you're at the wrong residence. Yeah, I, uh, this is, he's actually specifically referring to a, a situation that happened to us in our gaming group. Okay. Um, and, uh, I, I thought this is where you were going with it, but he's in the live chat now and he does confirm this. Okay. This is what he was talking about. Okay. Um, we were at a, uh, a local game store. Because it was a midpoint between our two homes. Oh, I. Oh, those are always interesting. Uh, so we decided this this game store is where we were going to have our games, mm-hmm. and the uh, presumably owner of the store, or at least one of sure. the employees of the store, um, uh, brought their kid with them to work, and of course the child was bored and just running around and just running around all over the place, and thought that our miniatures on the table were just the coolest toys, and wanted to handle them. And we were like, buddy, we're playing here. But, of course, you can't explain that to a toddler. So we're trying to be as nice as possible to this kid. But at the same time, there was a, can, can you, can you, come, come get your kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, we worked hard on these minis. We ordered them from Hero Forge because this is before we had the printer. Oh, and, yeah. You know, like. They're get, expensive. Let's, let's get this handled, please. You right. Know? So. No, I, I. It's a level of respect that wasn't put into place, and that the there are people who can handle that better. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's somebody in your group who's just better at handling kids and can kind of handle that situation until the parent shows up. Um, there are situations that I, I would say definitely make that more challenging, especially when it's the ownership or somebody, an employee at the store, mm-hmm. who is clearly not giving two shits about their kid being in a gaming store yeah that's harsh and that's I mean, harsh to, to to say that it contributed you know it's, it's it's not an understatement to say that it, it definitely contributed to our not coming back to that store to yeah i would definitely say that get through the situation that you have at hand you know do what you need to do mm-hmm. but if if you're ever going to play there again like now you obviously have to make plans for how you're going to play. Yeah. When we came back a second time and then and the, the the child involved was still there and we had a repeat appear, a, occurrence and so we were like, okay. This is a thing and not a one off. So yep. and at yeah. that point you just yep. got to you just got to step away. All right. Well, here we go. I would say that's that's a move. That's that's not a deal. Now, if it was at someone's home, it was one of your players' homes and that yeah, was happening. Yeah, you could you could at that point talk to the person involved and just be like, "All right." Sometimes and... you can't though because yeah. it's their the, it's their home. But at that point as a storyteller if it's if it's the storyteller who's getting the sacrifice there who's like, "Wait, I took all this time to set this up and you're telling me you just want my your kids to play with it?" No, I'm not comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. And if they're like, "Well, if you're not comfortable with that, let's, you know, maybe we shouldn't play here then." Yeah. Well, I have my kids and I got to keep track of them and blah. okay, well we've got to work this out then that this is a no child room while we're doing this right right 
And that sometimes is challenging. That is something you definitely have to communicate with, work through. And it's, it's a difficult thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, yep. all right, next one. All right, so Technolish asks, uh, sidelines, chatter, and the ever-present electronic distraction. Oh I have God. a lot of these at my table. What are some good ways to manage these externals without coming off heavy-handed? Well, let's see. The first thing you can do is set up parental mode on your Wi-Fi so that you have only limited sites that they have access. No, I'm, I'm oh, being geez. a jerk at this point now. <laughs> No, that's that's like some technical level shit that you don't need to do. Um, Password is put your damn phone away. <laughs> so true. So true. Um, I, I It starts with good communication and letting your players know what upsets you. Yeah. And, and, and what is it? Set proper expectations at first. Always. You know? um, and then nip it as it happens. Don't let it go on. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a player, I had a fellow player at a session do it to the storyteller. Mm-hmm. And I... I I had I had made a comment once. I made a comment a second time. The third time that it happened during a session where it literally derailed the session for 10 minutes while two people were talking that then became three people talking just completely ignoring the story as the storyteller is telling the story. I literally had to stand up and said we need to take a break cuz if we're not playing this game, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like we if you guys just don't want to play today, I get it. But you've ignored the conversation and every time he says you know, uh, you, you, what's going on, you're like, oh, I can't hear. Well, you can't hear because you're talking. Mm-hmm. You're having a conversation with somebody else that has nothing to do with this game. Using a device that's not even necessary for this game. Like, yeah. we're not on, we're not using tablets for this game session to contr- control anything. I don't even know why that's open. Right, right. So I got upset as a player for the storyteller because I could feel that they were literally losing their session. Yeah. Because of it. So... I think as a player, you need to recognize that your time should be devoted. I'm not saying every waking second of your time should be devoted to playing, to watching the game, but it should be devoted more than doing work because number one, that storyteller is doing it for you. They're not being paid. Exactly. So, exactly. so from Technolich, from a player perspective, always remember that your storyteller is doing it because you asked for it. And is building a world for you and making it fun for everyone at that table. And the mm-hmm. best thing you can do is give them attention. That's yeah. the best payment you can give them. As a storyteller, you need to set those expectations early on of what you expect at your table. So it's not heavy handed when you come back and say, hey, guys, can you put the tablet away? Right. I just want some focus. That's all I'm asking for. Mm-hmm. If it's a hard day to focus, do we need to just freeze the session here and just be friends? Yeah. Yeah. And and, and I, I mean, I think we've done that once or twice where it's like, are we just not feeling the game today? And, and, and sometimes your players turn to you and go, I'm kind of not. Yeah, it's just a bad okay, day. Okay, let's let's call it here then. We'll pick up here next time. That's fine, you know. Like I said, real, real life happens, and we make accommodations for that. Don't, you know. But if you're there to game, game. And I think as a, as a player, I think, you know, side comments are fine. Um, when I'm playing, I always try to be conscious of it. And it's funny to make your offhanded side comments, but, like, make one and then step away from it. Right. You know, I, I'm going to say this and, and, and it was just brought up in chat and I, I want to thank Knox for bringing this up because it really triggered something in my head. And then I got another comment. Uh, and that was when you walk into someone's house who's mm-hmm. playing an Xbox game or something, if your first reaction is to talk over them while they're playing that game. Or while they're watching a cutscene or watching a movie mm-hmm. to another person, and their first reaction is to look at you and glare and then pause it and be like, excuse me, mm-hmm. you know that you're the person in the wrong. Yeah. Because that person's trying to focus. But nine times out of ten, I will flat out say this, when you walk into someone's house and they're playing a game, you're silent, you're staring at the screen and you're engaged. Your level of engagement staring at that screen should be the same to the GM. Yep. Yep. And I've and I've done that too. Mm-hmm. I've I've hit pause on my game before. You have on my on my tabletop game. You have and just waited mm-hmm. for the person to recognize to stop talking. Mm-hmm. Are we done? Can we continue? Okay. Yeah. It's your turn in combat. Thank you. you yes. Know? Yeah. Sometimes they just need that reset. Not yeah. everyone is. Not everyone can see that as clearly. Mm-hmm. It happens. Like, we, we all have different brain psychology. We all came from different places. I know whole families who literally, when they're watching a movie, will talk through the whole damn movie. Oh, yeah. Regardless oh, yeah. if it's the first time or the hundredth time. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure intermittently mm-hmm. with, a, with one of my best friends. Yep. And uh, he's like, I, I have to warn you. 
I talk through everything. I'm like, I think if we didn't talk through and make jokes through JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like, it's it's just that weird of an anime that, like, you've gotta. <laughs> right, <laughs> to be right. Able to go, but, yep. but at least that expectation was set But you forth, have to like, set that early on. You know, we, we know this is not a serious viewing party, you know. But, yep. but yeah, during during a movie... Yep. Like, if I'm into it, like, and that's not the expectation that we're going to lampoon the movie while yep. we're watching it, like, no, stop, shut up. And, and I, funny enough, I just watched a comedian um, who has autism. Mm-hmm. Um, and her show, you, you don't, re- she doesn't say it until a good way into her show, but she literally opens her show with an outline of her whole show. Uh huh. Like complete outline. She's going. I'm going to set your expectations because you have no idea what to expect, and I want to make sure by setting your expectations, I meet your expectations. So by telling you what the show is, I'm literally meeting your expectations. So, and she lays out the entire show for about a good 15 minutes of the 30 minute show. Okay. And it's amazing because it's funny in the way that she lines it out. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But she's doing exactly what that group needs and makes it funny and engaging for everyone else. So. If you can do that, if you, some people need that, they need to know what's happening. What's going So if you're like, okay, guys, we're going to get into this. I'm going to go through the session. We're going to spend about two hours. We're going to take a break. We'll do lunch. After that, we'll do two more hours of the session. Wherever we get to is where we get to. Yep. And then I'm going to wrap up with questions and we'll be all be out of here by 30. Sounds good. Think you can keep your focus with me. All right. If you can't, I'm going to be doing some notes to make sure like, Hey, you know, let's dreams back in. I might, you know, dance things. You set those expectations. You give them a good framework. You'd be amazed how receptive people can be you know and i am glad you brought up the schedule and like scheduling a lunch break or you know dinner break especially with online because well well first off it's great with 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 online but just in general what i've really found is when we do schedule the break time ahead of time Mm -hmm. you can actually divert a lot of your table chatter to the break time guys we we only got 15 minutes to go before before we go to dinner can we discuss this then oh yeah yeah sure 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 Boom, instantly snaps back. Now, when break comes around, wham, they devolve directly into, oh, my God, ha, 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 that was that funny thing. And that's great because that's what that's for, you know. But at least now it's not derailing your game. Right. And if you can shove that forward just that extra 15, 20 minutes, like, you can you can joke about this all you want in 20 minutes. Yep. Right now we're in the middle of combat. Let's get through it. Yep, exactly. Boom. And it Everybody's keeps... on board with that. Yep, and I I think that is a great way to do it. But uh, and I'm going to say this etiquette wise for a storyteller while you're in the game, have some respect for your other players' physical needs. Mm-hmm. So people sit down, ask them, you know, do you make sure you have your drink, make sure you have your food. We're sitting here for online. I'm going to check back with you guys in an hour. Yep, into play. Wherever we're at, roughly about an hour from now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a five minute break. I'm going to check in with everybody, see where we're all at. Maybe we need a 10 minute break at that point, And then we roll on. Yeah. Don't try and push more. And I will say this flat out. I don't care how exciting things are. Try not to push past two hours. People will fall apart mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you can't see their faces to know where they're at. Yeah, unless spe- you're, unless uh, you're like zooming it, especially online when you're sitting at a computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I know I need to get up and kind of walk around a little bit and yeah. stretch every so and then I'll, I'll do this when we're, when we're playing. Oh yeah, and, totally. And you'll put snacks up on your counter in the yeah. kitchen and I'll get up and walk over there and I'll game yeah. from the snack table and like for the, you know, for the next 15 minutes or so yeah. just cause I want to be standing. Yep. Yeah. I'm still participating. Yeah. My wife but, cleans sometimes during sessions. Yeah. It happens. Exactly. Like she'll just be a few feet away. All right, let's try and get this last one in. Yeah. So Overwatch asks, uh, where do you, uh, where do you draw the line between enforcing good tabletop etiquette and keeping the casualness of gaming with friends? Uh, is the same, uh, is it the same line that you would draw to say hosting a barbecue or if everyone was playing Monopoly? Um, personally, I think that's determined per game session or per, per table. I agree. Like I like to run a pretty serious game. I like to have serious focus. focus. Yeah. Yeah. I like to have, I like to have focus. I like to have dedication. I like to get through st- uh, story. A lot of times my stories typically are a little, I don't know, more serious in tone. Um, but there are other gaming groups that just show up and they just want to goof off. Yeah, and that's I fine. Agree. If yeah. that's if that's the tone of your gaming table, like Techno Lich, I think runs a game like that where it's very non-serious. Yeah, just read your game. Um, all right. So next week's topic, we're going to be talking about uh, the death of characters, how in-game and out-of-game ramifications can come from that, and some. And I'll be including some things about what can cause death of characters. Yep. 
So uh, you can find us online at, at uh, on Twitter at st underscore conclave on Instagram at st underscore conclave. Uh, you can listen to us live uh, uh, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on mixlr.com slash storyteller dash conclave. And uh, if you can join our Discord, you can find the link to the Discord up on our Twitter and up on our website storyteller dash conclave dot blueberry dot net. Thank you so much to our Patreon members, especially Knox, Sam, and the Arcane Asylum. We appreciate everything you guys do to help keep our show going every single week, uh, and uh, we look wait for new ways to uh, bring you guys into the story and enjoy the show for us. So if you've got ideas, please let us know. Our intro music is Beyond the Warriors by Geefrog. You can find that at geefrogmusic.webly.com or on Google Music. Our outro music is Only Our Footprints in the Sand by Midair Machine. You can find that at soundcloud.com slash machine slash tracks. And I want to give, uh, give a big shout out as always to our families, Vicky and Sean. Thank you for supporting us. All of our friends who've sat with us at our tables over the years and over you uh, and all of you, our mm. listeners, we love every one of you. We love you. Thank you. Good, Good night. night.